who is Jesus Christ? This is the most important question that we'll ever ask. You know, we have to understand this, and to understand this, we have to go to the source documents that give us the life of Jesus Christ. And this is the New Testament. A lot of people have a bias against the New Testament. They feel like, oh, well, we can't go to the Bible to learn about Jesus Christ, not knowing that the Bible is not a book that was put together all at once, but the Bible is a collection of historical documents. And when it comes to the New Testament, these are the most reliable because these are the earliest manuscripts and these were written by eyewitnesses or people who knew the eyewitnesses. This is why this is the most reliable source. If you wanna learn about a person, you need to go to the people who knew that person and the people who were around when he was around. This is why the reliability of the New Testament is so high because these are the most reliable documents we have for the life of Jesus Christ. So, a lot of people like to say, you know, Jesus, he was a, a good man. Some people believe he was just a, a prophet. Some people believe he was just a son of God, just like everybody else, that he, he had the same abilities that we do. These are a lot of the popular theories. But if we're going to the source documents, the most reliable documents we have, and the only reason why we know about Jesus is from these documents, this is where we should get our understanding of Jesus. Not our own mind, not our own presuppositions, but from the source documents. So the first thing I want you to note about Jesus Christ is that he was here in the beginning. In the beginning, when the earth was created, Jesus was here. Right here, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in John 1, 14, we're told, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. So first of all, he was here from the beginning. And it says that this word was God and was with God something that we don't have complete understanding of because nobody can have complete understanding of God at all. Now, secondly, he, Jesus was the creator of all things. Right here in Colossians 1, 12 through 14, through 16, I'm sorry. Giving thanks unto the Father which have made us meet to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood and even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So this is what we hear about Jesus, that he is the image of the invisible God. And by him, all things were created. Everything was created for him and by him. We already know that God made the world for his own pleasure. So it's made through him and by him. This is what we're hearing about Jesus. Also, another thing about Jesus, number three, He's able to forgive sins. Right here, Matthew 9, verses 2 through 3. Some man brought to him a paralyzed man laying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. So these um, teachers that said Jesus were blaspheming were saying this for a reason, because nobody has the authority to forgive sins except God. And this is why they accused him for, for being blasphemous, because he was forgiving this man's sin, something that only God can do. Number four, another thing, Jesus was able to control weather. Mark 5, verses 37 through 41, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and he was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? 
that even the wind and waves obey him. So who can control um, the wind and the waves? Nobody has ever done this except for God. But number five, he is also able to raise the dead. In John 11, verses 42 through 43, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Then he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. When the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. Here he is, raised the soul from the dead, not praying and asking God to do it, but him himself with his voice saying, Lazarus, come out. Jesus is able to give eternal life. John 11, verses 25 through 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? So here, Jesus is saying, look, if you believe in me, you will live forever. You will have eternal life. Everyone that reads the Bible knows that it's faith in God that gives you eternal life. So how can Jesus come and say that if you believe in him, you're given eternal life, unless he is God? And then as more confirmation in John 12, 44, then Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. So, so he's saying, if you believe in me, you also believe in the one who sent me. They are one. The Bible tells us that the Father and Son are one. They are God together. He will judge the earth on judgment day. Matthew 25, 31 through 34. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. The people of every nation will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, my father has blessed you. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. So here, the Son of Man, as, as uh, Jesus' title has been many times throughout the Bible, is, is given to Jesus, and he is going to be the one to judge the earth. So here's a recap. He was here in the beginning. He created all the things in the earth. He has the authority to forgive sins. He can control the weather. He can raise the dead. He can give eternal life and he will judge the earth. This doesn't sound like a great man or a prophet to me. This sounds a lot like God. Something to think about.